Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. A man drags a frightening looking scarecrow through a cornfield. After finding a suitable spot, he digs and plants the scarecrow. Under the cloths, it's revealed to be a person. Of course, this particular scarecrow fails its purpose, and crows peck at the person who tries to scream desperately, but it comes out muffled. The scene then shifts to a group of teenagers in a car stopping at an abandoned gas station. They're heading to a pond for a swim. We're introduced to Farbsy, the athlete who knows how to enjoy any situation. At the wheel is ELY, a nerd madly in love with Ash, his like-minded and reserved companion, also there is Devon, Farbsy's girlfriend, who's annoyed with the boys because their only shared brain agreed to pick up a convertible. The boys wait while the girls relieve themselves behind a rock, when suddenly something falls from the sky onto their windshield. They look closely and discover it's a thumb. ELY gets scared and starts panicking, while Farbsy tries to calm him down. When things don't seem to work, Farbsy has a great idea and uses the wipers to get rid of the thumb on the windshield, which only spreads the blood all over it. Then ELY decides to distract the girls until Farbsy gets rid of it, and once they finish, they decide to cover the rest of the journey on foot, as the pond is nearby. They take the trail and soon arrive at a cornfield, where they see a scarecrow with a crow perched on it. They find it strange, as scarecrows are supposed to scare away birds. They continue and eventually pass a sign saying not to go any further. A few steps ahead, they see another crow feeding on something. Ash's love for birds makes her advance in hopes of interacting with the crow, but she suddenly recoils, shocked to see the crow feeding on a human finger. The boys quickly dismiss her speculation and shift their focus to the fun time they will have. As soon as they leave, a person covered in burlap sacks can be seen running through the cornfield, screaming for help. He removes the sack from his face, revealing a bloody scene. He runs in random directions, as the field is like a maze, and soon hears the terrifying whistle of the man from the first scene, presumably the farmer. The man tries to flee, but the farmer pulls him back by the rope tied around his neck, and screaming immobilized, he has no more hope, and then the man kills him using his scythe. Meanwhile, the group of friends has covered a considerable distance, which is why they don't hear the poor man's screams for help. They've been walking for a while, but still can't find the pond. The girls are starting to lose patience, so the boys suggest they go ahead while the girls wait and rest for a while. The boys walk a bit more and find the blue water they've been looking for all this time. They call the girls, and upon arrival, Farbsy is the first to strip off his clothes and jump into the lake. The girls and ELY join him soon after, then everyone enjoys themselves. ELY and Ash are the first to get out of the lake, and ELY presents her with a promise ring, then confesses his feelings. It's time to leave, but the girls refuse to go back to the car. Devon asks ELY and Farbsy to find a way to bring the car to them while they wait at the lake. Farbsy and ELY somehow manage to get back to where the car was, but their car is gone, and Farbsy starts blaming ELY for having the car stolen. They get into a heated argument, but since this is not productive, they start fighting. Meanwhile, the girls are lying by the lake when they hear a noise from the bushes. Devon warns whoever is hiding to back off, but when the noise doesn't stop, the girls grab their stuff and run. They soon find ELY and Farbsy in a fight. Things get tense when the boys tell the girls their car is missing, and everyone starts complaining about each other, venting their frustration. ELY yells for everyone to stop and tries to calm the situation, staying positive as they discuss what they should do. Ash spots the farmer from earlier and calls out to him. Everyone follows him, but discovers that the farmer disappeared when they reached the enclosed area. Devon is the first to cross the fence, and the others follow, except for Farbsy, who hasn't recovered from the trauma he faced in the sixth grade when he ruptured one of his testicles climbing a fence. Not wanting to be mocked for it, he decides to face his fears. But, as he's crossing the fence, he slips and gets his thigh caught on the sharp fence. He screams in pain, and ELY has a great idea and pulls the thorns from his leg, ripping out chunks of flesh in the process. With no other choice, ELY takes off his shirt, ties it around Farbsy's wounds, and helps him up. They slowly walk in search of the farmer, hoping he can help them. They arrive at the scarecrow and Farbsy can't walk anymore. ELY helps him sit at the base of the scarecrow and says he'll find the barn and come back for them. Annoyed with how things are turning out, Devon offers to accompany ELY and smiles at Ash, 
who is left to take care of Farbsi until they return. ELY and Devon find the barn, but Devon stops ELY from asking for help. Instead, she suddenly has the idea to seduce ELY and starts kissing him. Meanwhile, in the middle of the cornfield, Farbsi and Ash wait for their return, unaware of the betrayal happening behind them. While they talk, Farbsi reveals to Ash a secret he hides in his backpack and pulls out two large bags of marijuana, which he claims to be top quality. They laugh as Farbsi describes the potency of the weed and asks Ash to roll a joint to help with the pain. It's getting dark and Devon is still doing what she shouldn't, when ELY asks her to stop because he hears a whistle coming from behind them. When he turns his head to check, she turns more than he wanted after being punched by the sneaky farmer. The farmer then turns to Devon, who tries to run, but he knocks her down using his scythe, and she falls headfirst, becoming unconscious. The farmer drags Devon to the barn and seats her in the torture chair, which still has remnants of his previous victims in the form of blood splatters. He ties her arms, legs, and head with a belt around her neck. At that moment, Devon regains consciousness and pleads with the farmer to let her go, soon starting to cry for help. The farmer then takes a needle and thread and sews her lips shut to make her stop screaming. The coward then knocks her out with a punch to the face. He also brings ELY unconscious and ties him to a rocking chair. He brings a syringe and is ready to inject something into ELY, but Devon screams and, in the process, tears the stitches on her lips. She cries for them to be let go, making the farmer change his mind and inject Devon instead. Devon suffers from drug-induced temporary paralysis, and the farmer covers her face with one of the bizarre sack masks he has in his collection. His previous victim lies unconscious nearby, and after dealing with Devon, he takes ELY out of the room. Outside in the field, Ash and Farbsy still wait for their friend's return when Farbsy feels the need to relieve himself. Ash reluctantly helps him, takes him to a denser vegetation area, leaves him there to fertilize the crops, and goes back to the scarecrow. She becomes intrigued by the scarecrow's frightening appearance and tries to look inside to see what it's made of. When the scarecrow's head falls off and several worms fall on her, making her scream. Suddenly, she hears a whistle and starts calling for her friends, thinking it's one of them, but someone behind the bushes grabs her and pulls her inside. She screams, but the man calms her down and reveals that he's been watching her group all day. He warns her that she can't escape until she follows him. Ash asks him to take her injured friend along and tells the man about his injury, but the man says her friend will have to find his own way. Frightened by what's happening, she decides to follow the man, and he takes her to the barn, where she sees their car. She becomes suspicious of the man, but he convinces her that she has no choice but to seek his help. He takes her to the same chamber with the torture chair, which is empty and stained with fresh blood. The man says people shouldn't trespass and, after Ash assures him that he can trust her, he reveals that the scarecrows are alive and are victims of the murderous farmer, turning them into scarecrows as punishment for trespassing. He shows Ash a body, presumably a woman, hanging from the ceiling and says the trespassers took the only companion of the murderer, and now he seeks revenge. Suddenly, someone messes with the door, and Ash hides while the man stands still. When the farmer enters, the man calls him father and, at his signal, the son drags an unconscious Farbsy inside. The farmer then removes the bag from ELY, whose lips are stitched, and turns him into a scarecrow. The son helps the farmer to tie ELY to the crossbar, and once done, the farmer picks the longest nails and hammers them into the limbs to keep them in place. ELY screams in pain, but his scream is muffled due to the stitches in his mouth. When the farmer moves to the other arm, Ash, who has witnessed everything, can't just sit there and watch her friend being tortured. So, she thinks of the best idea of all, she plans to attack the farmer using a screwdriver she's hiding behind her. She walks towards him and attacks the farmer, but he is too strong for her. Then, she resorts to plan B and pleads for help from the farmer's son, but the son can do nothing, as he's scared of his father. The farmer headbutts Ash and knocks her out. After installing the crossbar with ELY crucified, they return to Ash, who is now tied to the torture chair. The farmer's son approaches a terrified Ash with a knife and, to her surprise, frees her. He explains that the effect of the injection will soon pass. He tells her that her friends are in the field, so all she can do now is save herself. He hands a lantern to Ash and tells her to leave the cornfield the way they entered and find the road. But before she can escape, the farmer catches the son helping Ash. 
The son pulls out a knife and assertively tells the father that he needs to end this by letting Ash live. Now almost shouting, the son tells the father that what happened to his mother in the past was an accident. He looks at the body hanging from the ceiling, which was his mother, and pleads with his father to let Ash go, handing him the knife and apologizing to his mother. The farmer doesn't react as Ash escapes, but as soon as she's gone, the farmer stabs his son in the neck with the knife, killing him instantly. Ash runs through the cornfield and finds a scarecrow, thinking it's ELY. She removes the sack from the face and screams upon seeing Devon, who is already dead. Ash pulls a nail from Devon's body to defend herself and continues running. A few meters ahead, she comes across another scarecrow, but this time, as she approaches thinking it's ELY, the scarecrow jumps at her, making her run for her life. Ash eventually trips and falls, and the farmer soon catches up to her and looms over her. She pulls off the mask and uses the nail to stab the man's face, then kicks him away. In a moment of rage, she kicks him repeatedly, then flees trying to find an exit. When she hears moans in the distance, she approaches another scarecrow and discovers it's Farbsy, who is still alive but in terrible condition. Ash starts removing the nails to free him and soon finds a shovel. She tries to use it, but before she can, the farmer appears behind her and hits her on the head, leaving her dizzy. He then begins to strangle her but stops after Farbsy manages to swear at him. The farmer picks up the shovel and hits Farbsy hard, leaving him unconscious and bleeding profusely. When he turns around, he discovers Ash has escaped. The cornfield is a maze, and Ash soon gets lost in it, making it easier for the farmer to find her, as he knows every corner of that field. She runs until she falls unconscious. Ash wakes up and finds herself outside the field, near the road. She sees a car parked right in front of her and tries to get up, but as she's hurt her leg, she can't walk. She screams for help, but the young couple in the car can't hear her, as they have the music loud and are apparently also blind. Ash crawls and almost reaches the car door handle when she is dragged back into the field by the farmer. As she cries helplessly, knowing she will meet the same fate as her friends, we are taken back to the first scene, where the farmer finished installing the crossbar with Ash inside the sacks. She suddenly opens her eyes and screams, being eaten alive by crows. She manages to scare the crows away by shaking her head vigorously, causing the mask to slip off her face. Her lips are also stitched, and she looks to the sides, where her friend's lifeless bodies are hanging, as she waits for her end, crying for help that will never come. Sometime later, we see a group of men arriving at the same spot, hoping to fish, unaware of the terror that awaits them.